With the Red taking on Yale, it was senior night in Newman Arena. Aaron Osgood, Adam Wire, and Mark Curry were honored before their final collegiate game. Wire and Curry, both key reserves in this year's rotation, were given starting roles on Saturday, while Osgood was limited by a knee injury that's plagued him for the last 10 games. Early on, it's Curry giving the Red a boost in the paint. He gets the jump hook to fall over the Ivy League's leading shot blocker, Greg Mangano, good for a 7-3 Cornell lead less than four minutes in. Next trip down, and the Red continue the early run. Anthony Gatlin finishes off the Miles Asafo with Jay feed. Using the left, he also goes over Mangano to give Cornell the six-point edge. Ball pressure was key to an effort that head coach Bill Courtney called his team's best defensive outing of the year. Here, Curry's able to come up with a steal. He shoves it off to Drew Ferry for the jumper. Ferry would pace the red with 15 points on the evening. We'll skip ahead. Seven and change left in the first now. Freshman Jeremiah Kreisberg scores off the baseline inbounds play, part of an 8-0 Yale spurt to knock the game at 18. A few possessions later, the Bulldogs now on top by a pair. Curry finds Gatlin for the slam underneath to spark a 7-0 Cornell response and put the red up five. Less than four minutes remaining in the opening period now, and it's Mangano on the offensive end this time. A little bit of spin on the up and under move cuts the Cornell lead to three, but the Red would lead by six at the break. Second half now, and Curry goes right back at Mangano. The hook falls once again for the senior who finished with eight points and five boards in this one. Next time down the floor, it's Wire running the break. He too avoids the Mangano swat to push the lead to double figures. And capping the 10-0 run for Cornell, it's Chris Robleski with the right wing triple. He gives the Red its largest lead of the night at 13. Yale would counter with an 8-0 spurt once again, though. Reggie Wilhite contributes three straight buckets in the span, including this layup in transition, and the Elis are back within five. Next possession down, though, and Gatlin provides the answer once again. He uses the corner jumper to push the Cornell lead to seven. The junior-eligible forward finished with 10 points in just 14 minutes on the night. A driving kick from Johnny Gray to Adam Wire keeps the foot on the gas for Cornell. The right corner seems to be the sweet spot for the red as the senior knocks down the three ball with 12.30 left in this one. Two minutes later, Gray also finds the mark from deep to push the red lead to 11. He was one of nine Cornell players to log 13 minutes or more, a balanced attack that also put three players in double figures. Yale would claw back within five once more, but just as he had done twice prior on this night, Gatlin provides the response. He throws in the righty jump hook at the eight minute mark to make it a three possession game. Now five minutes remaining and Robleski takes the circuitous route to the bucket. He uses the rim as the shield as the six foot guard finishes among the trees with the reverse and has the red up 13. A 10 point lead with 158 left in New Haven marked the beginning of an historic collapse one month ago. Same deficit, same time on the clock here and Mangano puts in his eighth field goal of the night. The bucket cut the Cornell lead to eight, but that's as close as it would get. Ferry puts the finishing touches on this one before Aaron Osgood gets one final appearance. Despite missing the previous nine games due to injury, Osgood gets a ceremonious six-second curtain call as the Red finish strong, avoiding last month's late collapse and come away with the victory. We've grown in four weeks. I think, you know, that was a month ago that that happened, and that was kind of the, the turnaround for us because even though we lost that game, we played 38 great minutes, and we used that to catapult us into playing a little bit better down the stretch. But believe me, I thought about it when the score was the same. It definitely went through some adversity this year. Uh, a lot of it can be attributed to, you know, a lot of things. People are saying, you know, new coach, new players and everything. Um, but as the year went on, um, you know, we just gelled. We, we, became more confident. We went through a lot of losses um, late. Um, once we got a few wins, then we started believing in ourselves more. Um, we started playing a lot better as a team. And, um, you know, tonight was just all about the seniors. You know, we couldn't have, uh, couldn't have sent these guys off on a losing note. So, I mean, that's what fueled that one. Well, I think you got to give those guys um, some acknowledgement for what they've done in the last four years. Uh, been an incredible group. And in particular for me this year, uh, you know, all the adversity we went through losing all those close games and to rally down the stretch and play like we have down the stretch has been terrific. You know, only a few teams get to end their season on a win. And we got to end our season on three wins in a row, our longest win streak of the year. And so uh, those guys have been terrific this year. As a first-year head coach, I couldn't ask for a group of leaders uh, better than the group that just left. I think just, we just grew as a team. And we got, took some getting used to it with the coaches and the players. And uh, it was really nice to go out with three wins in a row. And uh, I think that's going to show for the next few years that it will be a real good team to, you know, in the Ivy League to come. So Right now we think, you know, we're top two, top three teams in the league right now. We're playing our, our best basketball. And, um, yeah, uh, we're, you know, we're missing three huge pieces that are leaving. But, um, you know, I think we're ending on a good note. We're definitely going the right direction. Um, we got to work hard in this offseason. I think Coach Courtney said we're, the league's returning like something like nine of the top ten scorers. So 
you know, we're getting better, but, you know, no one's getting worse. Despite the loss of three top post players, the Red returns key pieces as it looks to build towards its next Ivy League championship. One last time from Newman Arena, I'm Sam Alenikoff, Slope TV.